guys, welcome to the Fire and Patriot channel. I'm Russ and today I'm going to give you five reasons why you should buy the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact over the Glock 19 Gen 5. Now if you've already picked the Gen 5 as your gun, more power to you. It's an excellent gun. It does everything a self-defense gun is supposed to do and a little bit more. But I think there's five strong reasons why you should take a look at this M&P 2.0 Compact. So let's get to them right now. Okay guys, this isn't a video to just bash Glocks. Uh, this is my Glock 19, and if this is your chosen self-defense handgun, I think you've made a wise decision. Glock does a lot of things right, and they don't do much wrong. That's why they are the class leader in the compact arena. But I still think there are five reasons you should take a look at buying the M&P 2.0 compact over the Glock 19. Reason number five is cost. The M&P is substantially cheaper than the Glock 19. Now some people argue this with me, but the, if you go on gunsdeal.com, you'll see that, that the M&P is at least $100 cheaper than the Glock, unless you have some type of police uh, discount or some kind of discount that's offered by Glock that's not offered to the rest of us normal citizens. So from that standpoint, that is a substantial savings, and you can also uh, buy ammo with that. You can buy your holsters and other accessories with that uh, savings. So I think that is pretty significant. I actually bought this gun for $344 after the $50 manufacturer's rebate. I paid full price of $560 with this gun plus tax. So I'm well over $200 in savings by buying the M&P uh, by itself, which would also allow me to put an Apex trigger in there. And if you've never tried an Apex trigger, you should, particularly in the M&P series, because it's probably one of the best aftermarket triggers on the market. Another thing too, I'm a patriotic individual. I'm sure you are too. I try to buy American products when I can, uh, particularly if they are as equal uh, as the uh, other country that's offering the similar product. And in this case, I think that Smith & Wesson's made a very good product. They're coming hard at Glock. So is a lot of other manufacturers. So I think being made here in America also kind of gives it a, a kind of a bump up for me in relationship to taking a really hard look at this 2.0. Reason number four is the grip angle. Now I know that's not a big issue if you've been shooting Glocks uh, ever since they've been out, but for a new shooter, I think it is an issue. You kind of have more of a 1911 style grip angle on the uh, M&P, and I think it just makes it easier for you to come on target quicker, uh, and it feels better in your hand, and it feels more natural. So I think that is a huge uh, selling point to me uh, when I'm holding the two guns. Now, the third reason kind of, it also relates to the grip. This texturing that they have on here is extremely aggressive. I like it. Now, some people may not like it because they may say, well, it's going to rub against my skin. I've not had that issue, uh, but it feels a little bit like sandpaper, and I've had to draw the gun with my hands wet while it was raining, and you get a very good purchase on the gun, even in wet weather. Another uh, issue there is is that Glock's just not quite that good. They do have some stippling here, uh, but it's not nearly as aggressive as the Smith & Wesson M&P. Now, some people may like the Glocks better. I understand that. But for me, uh, the grip texture is much better on the 2.0. Another thing we're going to go ahead and characterize there in three is these palm swells. Now, what you've got to understand about the difference in grips between the Glock and the 2.0 is that the Glock is in the standard form without any back strap being placed on it is still larger than the M&P with the medium sized palm swell on there. So I actually have to go to a large palm swell to get to where the standard Glock is. So Glocks, if you have a small or medium hand, they may not fit you that well. Uh, what this does is it allows me to customize the gun so I can work the controls easier. Also, it impacts what I call length of pull. You hear that talk a lot about rifles and shotguns, but it's also an issue to me when it comes to handguns, and that's the distance between the back here and the center of the trigger. Now, it's uh, again shorter here with the uh, 2.0 up through the medium, and to get it larger, you gotta go on back. Glock's a little bit longer, so if you have smaller hands, again, the Glock may be more difficult for you to shoot. 
Okay, number two is the sights. The M&P has very good three dot sights. You can see the, the dots are very brilliant white. Still, they're steel. They're also combat sights that have a good ledge here, so you can rack that slide if you need to. Glock at over $500, you get plastic sights. They have the U notch with white dot up front. They are white, they are usable. Uh, some people like them, I don't mind them, uh, but most people are going to replace them. So that's another hundred dollars you're going to add to your gun. Another issue too is the M&P comes with a steel magazine. Comes with two steel magazines while the Glock comes with three polymer magazines. Now there is a reason why the U.S. Army requires their magazines to be steel. And that's durability. Uh, they're going to take a lot harder beating than what a polymer magazine will. Uh, so I think that the steel magazines are really worth more than the Glock's three uh, plastic magazines. So I think that's number two why you should look at the 2.0. Last but certainly not least is the trigger. I think the trigger on the Smith & Wesson M&P is a much better trigger. Go ahead and pull that for you. I know it's uh, hinged. A lot of people don't like that. It's not a big issue to me. It does have some take up. Go ahead. It does have some take up. There's your wall. Snap. Reset. And you can feel that reset. Now, a lot of people talk about audible reset. That doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I don't hear that on the range when I'm shooting, but I do feel it with my finger when I'm releasing the trigger back out as to where I need to stop at. And that's really the key. How, how can you feel that? Now this trigger is going to come in about four pounds and 10 to 12 ounces, which is better than the Glock's five pounds and, uh, and five to six ounces. So it's a little, little more. Okay. Uh, the Glock has a pretty good reset. I don't mind the Glock's trigger. I just don't think it is, it's as good as the 2.0. And with all things considered, better sights, better grip angle, better texture, better customization on the grip, a better trigger, I think the M&P 2.0 Compact is just a better gun to shoot. So those are my five reasons why you should take a look at buying the M&P 2.0 Compact over the Glock 19 Gen 5. Now this is the 4 inch model. As you know they have a 3.6 inch barrel model as well. Uh, just another option for you from Smith & Wesson. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like it and share it uh, and subscribe. So with that being said, this is the Fire and Patriot. Till next time, God bless America.